Though first launched in 1960, Delta's story really begins in the mid-1950s with the development of the Thor Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile. Named after the Norse god of thunder, Thor was created in response to a growing fear that the Soviet Union would beat the U.S. in the deployment of a long-range ballistic missile. The goal was to design a system that could deliver a nuclear warhead to a target 2,300 miles away, the distance between the United Kingdom and Moscow. On January 25th, 1957, the first Thor lifted off from the newly constructed Space Launch Complex 17 at Cape Canaveral. Following a series of early failures, the Thor team celebrated their first success on September 20th, 1957. In all, 59 Thor IRBMs were launched, with the last flight occurring in 1975. Thor began the transition from missile to space launch vehicle in 1958. On October 11th, 1958, America's newly formed space agency marked its inaugural launch when Thor Abel boosted NASA's Pioneer One on a mission to the moon, and NASA's long partnership with Thor was born. NASA and the Douglas Aircraft Company began development of the fourth and longest lasting Thor configuration in April 1959. Using a Thor first stage and a Vanguard second and third stage, Delta I lifted off on May 13, 1960 from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 17. Though its first launch was not successful, the Delta team quickly pinpointed the failure. Three months later, delivered NASA's Echo 1 communication satellite to orbit. Following Echo 1, the Delta team racked up an impressive 22 successful launches. Led by Bill Schindler, the Delta rocket earned its industry workhorse moniker for rapidly establishing itself as one of the most reliable and versatile launchers. During the 1960s, Delta launch vehicles paved the way for the burgeoning communications industry, launched America's first weather satellites, and sent probes to explore our universe. AT&T's Telstar 1, the first commercial communication satellite, launched in 1962, and in 1963, SYNCOM-2 became the world's first geosynchronous satellite. TIROS, or Television Infrared Observation Satellites, provided the National Weather Service with humans' first view of the Earth's cloud cover. In orbit around the Earth, Moon, and Sun, NASA's Explorer satellites provided us with a deeper understanding of the solar wind, cosmic rays, as well as Earth's magnetic field and radiation belts. By the end of the decade, launch vehicle modifications, including the addition of solid rocket motors and an upgraded third stage, made it possible for Delta to orbit satellites 10 times larger. The 1970s was an international decade for Delta, as the manifest included scientific and communication satellites for several countries across North America, Europe, and Asia. Perhaps the most demanding challenge of the 1970s was the launch of the Earth Imaging Earth Resources Technology Satellite, later known as Landsat. The mission for the Earth Sciences community required major changes to the Delta propulsion and guidance systems. During the 1980s, Delta continued its reliable service to the communications, weather, and Earth imaging communities. As capable as the Delta rocket proved to be, Production came to a halt in the early 80s, when national space policy dictated that the space shuttle be used as the U.S.'s primary launcher, signaling the end of the expendable launch vehicle. But in 1987, the Delta team picked up where they left off, and development began on a launch vehicle to support the Air Force's global positioning system. On February 14, 1989, Delta 184 began a new chapter in space launch history as it lifted off from Space Launch Complex 17. Demonstrating an incredible feat, the Delta II had gone from development to launch in just two years. To accommodate the larger GPS satellites, engineers improved the Delta rocket in several ways. The fuel tanks were stretched, a new payload fairing was developed, and larger solid rocket motors were incorporated. The modifications resulted in increased performance and flexibility. By the mid-1990s, the Delta II had delivered the fully operational 24-satellite GPS constellation. And though it was developed for the Air Force, Delta again became a reliable partner to both NASA and its commercial customers. Over the course of its more than 20-year run, 
the Delta II has launched some of America's best known scientific and exploration missions. Plus four, three, two, we have main engine start, zero and liftoff of the Stardust spacecraft. And liftoff of the Delta II rocket carrying the spirit from Earth to planet Mars. Liftoff of the Delta II with Grail, journey to the center of the moon. On the commercial side, Delta II launched the Global Star and Iridium constellations, which brought satellite telephone communication to the world. Continuing its evolution to meet the growing demands of its satellite customers, the Delta team developed the more powerful Delta III. Though short-lived, the Delta III doubled the performance of the Delta II. Of ignition, ignition and liftoff of the Boeing Delta III rocket. Stage systems looking normal. In partnership with the Air Force's evolved expendable launch vehicle program, the Delta team began development of the next generation Delta rocket in the mid-1990s. And we have liftoff of the first no, Boeing Delta IV rocket Two. carrying the W-5 telecommunication satellite for Utilsat of France. All Delta IV configurations begin with the common booster core, powered by the RS-68A main engine. The Delta IV Heavy, with its three common booster cores, deliver our nation's largest missions to orbit. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket, carrying the NROL-32 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Delta IV launch vehicles are produced at a 1.5 million square foot state-of-the-art facility in Decatur, Alabama. Processing and launch takes place at Space Launch Complex 37 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and Space Launch Complex 6 at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Range safety arm light on. Right. Range ready. Ready. Water system ready. From its early beginnings as a weapon and deterrent, through its transformation into a space launch vehicle, Delta has reliably supported our nation for more than 60 years. Delta's legacy as a workhorse continues today and is a testament to the persistence, dedication, and commitment of an enterprising team that has continually evolved the Delta rocket to support a changing world. Five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy Rocket. 